Hello and welcome. I crafted myself couple level 3 amplifiers a while back and mined through them. It took me a while to get around to finishing this video. I had other videos to work on. Stellaris stole few weeks of my life and there was so much footage to sift through that it took several sessions to edit it down into a somewhat reasonably long video. In other words, procrastination played a huge role in delaying this video. Regardless of that, it is here now and it is one of my longest videos yet, if not the longest. More than 24 minutes of good old dorky getting bent over and brutally violated by Lutius with no lotion to smoothen the process. Anyway, I originally prepared a commentary with the idea that I will talk over the first few minutes of the footage and then just let it run with no commentary. However, I changed my mind after I edited down the footage and realized this will be a 24 minute video with barely 6 minutes of commentary in it. Instead, I will start by talking about my experience crafting and using these level 3 mining amplifiers and then move on to other topics until I fill the entire video. You can find the list of different topics with timestamps in the video description and a pinned comment below. Anyway, I am using self-crafted level 3 finder amplifiers on this mining trip. I considered just stuffing them on auction, but this was a special occasion for me so I decided against it in the end. These were the first level 3 amps I have ever made. I did craft my own amps a few times in the past, however it was only level 2 lights and some Terra amp ones. The blueprint for level 3s is a recent acquisition for me, or rather it was back when I recorded this footage. I have not crafted any more of these amplifiers since then. However, I did craft one Terra Amp 5. That adventure will get a video of its own though. Either way, I went out unamped and mined up all the resources I would need for few clicks on the blueprint. It uses pretty much only cheap and easy to find materials. If you want to craft them, you will need some Blosarium, Listerium and Narcanism ingots as well as Alicenis gel to make the basic sheet metal needed. By the way, what sort of a twisted asshole came up with some of the material and mob names in Entropia? Let's get back on the topic of amps. Unlike the level 2 lights, level 3s only need 5 pieces of BDSM <coughs> BSM per click. Add in some survey probes from the trade terminal and enough metal residue to make a full TT amp and you are good to go. My residue came from about 30,000 clicks on Explosive Projectiles 1 blueprint I did over the couple days prior to crafting my level 3s. It would have been cheaper to buy the damn thing, but getting it from my own craft felt more satisfying. Depending on where I bought it, it would have cost me between 3 and 10 ped in markup. Making it myself came up to a loss of 44 ped and some change. And even though I did have a profit higher than that mining the ores I needed, that would not have been a common occurrence had I decided to keep doing this. I say this to make sure you understand that crafting your own amps can be a rather risky endeavor with wildly volatile returns. That is just mining and farming the residue, clicking the cheapest crap possible. Of course, if you are crafting stuff that is profitable by itself and use residue from that, it is a different story. Like if you are able to craft enhancers at fairly low cost and sell them at markup. Whatever the case though, mining amps are usually rather expensive per click. For example, the level 3s cost 8 ped and 95 pack per click. So unlucky streaks of fails and near successes can potentially turn you into Luteus's prison bitch. I decided to switch back to mostly unamped mining and occasionally 
craft my own amps because buying stuff off of auction and getting fucked by Luteus all the time is no fun. I might as well do it the way that feels far more satisfying to me. Work towards those amps, collect the stuff I need, make them myself and then go get fucked by the loot system. Or perhaps by the time I am done with menial tasks of collecting and crafting the components, loot system will decide it performed enough deep penetration on my unfortunate pet card already and I will global and half like mad using those couple amps I finally crafted. Turkey can dream, can't he? Either way, two level 3 amplifiers are good for 114 dual drops. By dual drops I mean searching for both ores and energy matter at the same time. I went through all my drops on Calypso, although I did change locations during my mining run. It did not help my return at all. While level 3 amps seem like a decent tool to use, I have never had much luck with them. Level 2, level 5 and D-class amplifiers tend to give me the best results. That being said, none of those offer constant good returns. There are always times when I get bad loot, no matter what I do, and it is best to go unamped when that happens. To conclude, it is not a good idea to craft your own mining amplifiers when you are on a low budget. However, if you have thousands of pads to play with, it can be a great way to enhance your experience with Entropia Universe. Just be ready that it will probably not be profitable until you reach higher levels in your crafting professions and max out the quality rating on your blueprints. Actually, I am not sure if most amplifiers ever become profitable to craft for most people. Although I am sure at least the big crafters that sell them all the time can squeeze some profit out of it. Anyway, I will move on to other topics now. First of all, I will tell you what game I am really looking forward to buying soon and my plans for the character I will create for my first playthrough. Then I will probably talk about some of the fun moments I experienced in Stellaris recently and my plans for some of my future videos. I will see what I can cram into this 24 minute video. But I reckon I need about 5000 words to fill the entire thing with commentary. Actually, I went and added what I have so far to the project in DaVinci Resolve and it looks like I might only need some 3.6 thousand words or so. But I am sure you already want to know what was the game I mentioned earlier. It is one of those games that gained almost mythical status thanks to the time in development and hype among the fans of the previous entries in the franchise. I guess you could say it spawned many memes and jokes that could be found in comments under thousands of YouTube videos that talk about video games, history and just about anything else. Despite the fact untold millions thought they would perish of old age before this game releases, the day has come recently. Well, technically this title is not out yet, as it only released in early access. Of course, I am referring to Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord. I did not ride the hype train, however when I saw it came out in early access, I got excited. Little Dorky saluted the banner and prompted me to go watch some hot gameplay videos. I enjoyed the first Mount and Blade game and bought Warband and with Fire and Sword when they were on sale too. Although I never really played the latter, only Warband. I got sort of burnt out playing the modded original Mount and Blade. Years have passed since then though and I am really looking forward to Bannerlord now. I think I will buy it tomorrow or the day after while it is discounted. 
it is very likely that I will have bought it by the time this video gets published. I still have one other video in the pipeline that I want to publish today or tomorrow. By the way, today is Thursday, April 9th, 2020. Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord is currently discounted by 10% on Steam with additional 10% for owners of any of the previous Mount and Blade games. Although you can get even better deal on Humble Bundle Store, if you have an active subscription to their monthly Humble Choice Bundle. The discount lasts until April 13th. Also, similar discount is available on Greenman Gaming Store. If you wish to watch a review, I would recommend you watch the video from the dude, whose name I can't pronounce for some reason, on Worth a Buy channel. The dude is funny as hell. I will link his video in the description and the pinned comment below. I will also link some funny exploit videos from Spiffing Brit and a video from Invicta that is quite an enjoyable listen and shows some gameplay footage from battles. As far as plans for my first character go, I think I will be a warrior trader named something along the lines of Dorky the Fat Fuck or Dorky Master of 42 inch Dildo. I am not sure about the exact name yet. However, I know that I will roleplay the shit out of this game. I shall gallop around the map on my giant horse wielding wooden clubs and pole arms, pretending they are giant dildos. Or at least I like to think I would play it that way. Maybe I will just go down the route of the archer, as I usually do in these sorts of games, where the combat is a bit more tricky than just slashing at everything in front of me like a crazed cat. If that is the case, I will kneecap everyone laughing at them afterwards. They were adventurers like me, but then they all caught an arrow to the knee. Maybe I will just arm my henchmen with oversized tools of pleasure and let them loose on the enemy while I sit on my horse on top of a nearby hill, sipping coffee and stuffing my face with pastries looted from my previous victims. Who knows, I might even end up doing something entirely unexpected, like playing a decent and polite human being who likes to help villagers and random strangers on the road alike. <laughs> Fat chance of that. To conclude this part of the video, I am almost certain that I will buy Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord even though I am not sure which storefront I will buy it through. Right now Humble Bundle Store seems to be the cheapest option, although there is a voucher for extra 11% in the VIP area on GreenmanGaming.com. However, I am not sure whether the 21% discount they are showing is with that voucher included already or not. If they actually offer extra 11% on top of that, I will buy the game on their store. But it does look almost too good to be true, so I guess the 21% is most likely the total discount with the special voucher included. In that case it will be Humble Bundle Store where I get the 21% discount too and additional 88 cents will go to charity of my choice on top of that. Whatever the case, I might do a time jump into the future, once again if I end up enjoying the game as much as I suspect I will. Like when I bought the Federation's DLC for Stellaris in March. Suddenly more than 200 hours of my life went poof. Now that we are talking about Stellaris, let me tell you something. That game is like a drug. It will steal your life and consume you completely, provided that you are into games like this. The 4X and Grand Strategy games. Stellaris is especially engrossing if you are a science fiction fan on top of that. I do not think I have ever played another game that would capture the 
sense of awe and wonder in terms of space exploration, at least not among the strategy games. The early game can be quite challenging, even on the Commodore difficulty. Although if you build your species in the right way, you can outclass most AI empires fairly early on and turn the game away from challenging towards a power fantasy. I guess this is much different on Grand Admiral, where the buffs to AI players are huge. But let's be honest here, I am too much of a pussy to play on Grand Admiral difficulty or even on Admiral. Although I might try that at some point in the distant future. The things I enjoy the most about this game are the exploration of the galaxy and the early game expansion. I do enjoy designing new species and empires a lot as well though. There is so much potential for weird humorous creatures with even funnier stories behind them. I should probably mention that I do have all the expansions except for a couple of the portrait packs. All that spam of DLCs does add quite a lot of flavor to the game, as well as some game mechanics in case of the bigger DLCs. One of the DLCs that I have not made much use of until last few days is Megacorp. This DLC adds, among other things, a new government type. You can play as a mega corporation. This brings a bit different approach to the game. I have never really had much interest in playing this sort of an empire. However, lately I decided that I will give it a go. I made myself a <coughs> corporation that focuses on providing toys and devices for any king, an alien or any species in the galaxy may have. Any self-help item they might desire, they can purchase from Dorky Corporation. This is almost complete opposite of the sorts of empires I usually play. Not only are these Dorky I a corporation, they are also xenophiles. Although I did keep the authoritarian tendencies rather than going egalitarian. After all, someone has to work in all those flashlight and rubber tentacle factories. It might as well be indentured servants drafted from all species currently living in the corporate space. They will be graciously allowed to work hard and with no pay towards the profit of whoever happens to be the head honcho at the time. Megacorps hold elections every 20 years. Whoever gets picked is then the CEO for the next couple decades unless he, she or it kicks the bucket before their term is done. The player can use influence to keep the current leader in power. However, I cannot really imagine the case when I would have enough influence left over to waste on this nonsense. Influence is best used on expansion and later on building megastructures. Heck, I would even spend it on edicts before I'd even consider throwing it away on fixing the elections. Anyway, this particular brand of Dorkii species starts with three space habitats. They were forced off planet by their stuck up and sanctimonious kin decades ago. Their only choice was to move off world or cease production and sale of their goods. As any proper corporation always does, they gave a giant middle finger to everybody and found loopholes to continue their business. In the end, they were the ones having the last laugh. Few decades after the great corporate exodus to space, Dorkia, the home planet of the Dorkii, exploded. While this took the international pressure off of the Dorky Pleasure Corporation, it had the unfortunate side effect of wiping out their entire customer base as well. Gone are the days of easy profit from sitting within their home system. The time to expand and seek new markets among the stars has come. It is only natural that the xenophile elements within the corporate structure took over. After all, most of the new customers are oddly shaped and 
enjoy putting items of varying shapes and sizes into orifices defying imagination of all but the most xeno-oriented Dorkii. And what happens when the corporation comes across some species that cannot afford to pay for their toys? Well, of course, it makes even more profit by working them to the bone for the rest of their lives. They are no barbarians, though. There are social welfare programs for all employees, even the unpaid ones. Every single employee is entitled to a gift basket full of the company's latest products, chosen from amongst the substandard quality products, of course. This corporation sells only the highest quality goods, however that does not mean faulty pieces will go to waste either. The galaxy is full of people who appreciate high quality imitations of their preferred organs. That is even doubly true for the employees living on corporate lands who do not have time to engage in any form of reproduction beyond reproducing the official merchandise for foreign markets. I am starting to feel like a record stuck repeating the same shit in a loop. But those assholes must really have some way to monitor when I am recording my commentary. It was quiet all day, and then suddenly they started drilling into the walls shortly past 3 pm as I was recording the stuff I wrote before that point in time. There is nothing better to enhance one's experience of life than a shithead neighbor with a power drill. So please excuse the occasional construction noises that might have made it into the video. I tried to re-record every part where the sounds could be heard. However, I most likely missed a few here and there. I literally almost shot myself more than once when I lost control of myself and started yelling obscenities at the top of my lungs. I am too tired to be pissed off anymore. As soon as I finish writing and recording this, I will go distribute dildos to every motherfucker in the galaxy. Yes, even to the overpowered ringworld dwelling fanatical purifier dorky squatches that the game decided to spawn in for this playthrough for some reason. I will build up my trade network and overtake the galactic senate at the same time, my corporation already has enough diplomatic power from its strong economy to vote in any law it desires. The Trade Federation in Star Wars did it all wrong. They should have just bought enough senators to turn them into the ruling power in the galaxy instead of letting that old fart Palpatine fuck them over. Anyway, I wanted to mention my plans for the future content on this channel as well as some other plans before the end of this video. Let's get one thing out of the way first. I will most likely start a new channel sometime soon. It will not replace this channel in any way, shape or form, as it will be a side project. I will be uploading videos in Slovak language on that channel. So it will most likely be of no interest to those of you who do not understand that language. And aside from the language, the content I will upload there will be mostly the same. When it comes to my future videos, I will of course continue my Entropia Universe report series as well as make other Entropia related content. However, I will also start publishing more videos from other games, some reviews, some guides, and maybe also some lore videos for the games that pique my interest. One of the projects I am currently working on is a series of videos containing lore and background stuff around my custom species and empires in Stellaris. Anyway, that is all from me for today. Thank you for watching. I wish you all a nice day and please do not forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.